Hey everyone, we're back and this is another installment of Crystals and Coffee and today is really special because we are doing Tarot Tuesday and I have all of these female founded tarot card businesses coming on live today to talk about uh, how they got started um, what they're doing with their gift and so on and so forth and hopefully they're all going to pull a card from their decks for us because the new moon in Aries is, or sorry new moon full moon full moon in Aries is coming in hot on Thursday so I'm just gonna uh, take a little Palo Santo here and energize the space a little bit there's always time for a ritual. Never forget that. Just get a little smoke going. There we go. And I see, um, so Rachel from Minimalist Oracle is joining us, and I see she's here. So let me just get her on with a. Uh, can start our conversation. You can at, feel free to ask her any questions for sure. And we'll be. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Hi. So nice to see you. Your hair looks amazing. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. So um, I was just, well, you heard us talking about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you heard me and Kelly Outlaw love, love bombing you. Um, and we just love bombing you a little bit more before you came on. But I was wondering if you could introduce yourself and like tell people how you got started. Yeah. Um. I'm Rachel. I created the Minimalist Oracle about, I guess, four years ago now. Um, I really didn't know that much about tarot. I'd maybe been using tarot for about a year previous okay. to that. And it was just helping me a lot with the spiritual awakening journey I was on, I guess. Um, and I just kind of got an idea like, oh, I want to make a deck. And it was probably kind of a a divine guidance, I guess, now that I look back on it. Um, so I just like took a week off my job last minute and like sat in my house for a week and made most of what became the Minimalist Oracle. And I guess what I was really looking to create was I was looking at all the decks that were out there. And even I think just in the last four years, a lot more interesting things have appeared. Um, but I was like, just none of these are represent my aesthetic like nothing simple like it was all like angels and just stuff like that and I like that stuff too but I wanted something that was a little bit more I guess minimalist <laughs> so wait a minute you mean to tell me you created that deck in a week no <laughs> what? I began I started it um maybe finished about half of it I actually didn't finish it until that was maybe like the beginning of 2016. I finished it around the end of 2016. So yeah, it took a while. I had a lot of pauses in the middle, um, but I kind of got like the, the general idea together that week. Do you have your, your deck close by? I do. You do? Oh my gosh. Okay. So yeah. um, do you mind sharing? Cause I actually want to know too, where did you get the idea for your art yeah, I don't really know. I had never really created anything like that. Like I don't, I, at the time I did not have a creative job or anything. I was a project manager, kind of like the opposite of creative. Um, and it was kind of like, I want to create something, but I don't really have any like formal like art skills. <laughs> so like I can't draw like figures. So I sort of was like, well, what can I do? I can do these little shapes and I, I don't know. I think it's just, I've always been drawn to art like this. Um, and it's just kind of like a way that I express myself beyond language, I guess. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, when I work with your tarot with my clients, um, I've, I've actually gotten the same comment over and over, which I think is super cool. They're like, these look like little artworks that should belong in the MoMA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, oh my God, it's, I love that. And it's so true. <laughs> totally. I think that's definitely a, 
like I studied art history in college so I was always interested in I've been to a lot of museums, so for sure, <laughs> that is definitely an inspiration. Oh, okay. Now, now it's making sense. Now <laughs> it's making sense. Okay, so you you channeled all this, and um, what, when Kelly and I were talking, I do think that's um, one of the most beautiful things about what you're doing. And again, you you nailed it with the name Minimalist Oracle. That um, when you created this deck, there wasn't a lot of um, minimal or I would honestly say relatable decks that were out that you know you you were getting like one word to focus on or the artwork wasn't complicated um again it you know there's there's an, a time and a place for something that feels more like a writer weight tarot deck mm -hmm. but for somebody I think especially like your deck's one that if anybody's listening I always advise that if you're just getting into tarot and you like need to start somewhere that Rachel's deck is a good place to start because you get a Rider weight style deck and you get the five of pentacles and, and you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do with this thing? Right. Or you get the death card and you're like, did I yeah. really just get a skeleton with a sickle on a card? Like I'm trying to get some answers here. Yeah. <laughs> totally. That's a, that's a lot. <laughs> It is. And I think people get overwhelmed by feeling like they have to memorize all of that. And I will say, I use all of those decks. I use, you know, Rider weight and derivative of, derivatives of that. Mm -hmm. And I still, I'm just not a person who memorizes things. I still look up the, like, the meanings of the cards, even though I know yeah. what they mean. It's like, yeah, you, it's just too much sometimes. Yeah, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> exactly. Like, I'm like, I need something to look at. Oh, yeah, okay, that one. Yeah. So it's funny when I was just talking to Kelly because we um, we had that um, tarot history of tarot book up when we were talking before. It's just so beautiful. It's like a Bible. Mm -hmm. um, and I happened to turn to the death card in in here. They had a picture of it, and Kelly was saying because we were talking about you. She's like, "Oh my God, this is like." Um, Rachel's de a card that I have on my my altar that was the purge card and she's like well the purge card and the death card are kind of the same so my next question is were you um dismantling the traditional tarot and putting in more palatable words that made sense I literally was not it was <laughs> like very all the cards in this deck were a hundred percent based on just like things I had experienced on my journey Mm. I do think that those things tend to be universal and you probably could go through here and equate one of these cards to the traditional tarot because I think it captures it pretty well. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was just like, I've definitely had people ask me like, what's the meaning behind it? And I'm like, man, I really don't think that much about meanings. It just sort of was like what felt natural to me and just what I had experienced over like the year before that. So yeah, but I think it definitely definitely could be a death card <laughs> <laughs> right yeah <laughs> which is nice though but like again somebody just starting out you get a skeleton with a sickle <laughs> or you get a card that says purge you're like oh wait that makes I get that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> um I was wondering so as you know, the uh the full moon in Aries is upon us lady on Thursday mm -hmm. I was I was wondering for everybody listening, if you'd be open to doing a small reading or pulling a card or something like that around. Yeah. Cool. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Show us your process. Teach us how you do it. Sure. I like to do two cards with this deck. Cool. So I will do that. I guess like, it's kind of funny. I don't do this in front of people very often, um, but I just do a little shuffle. Here's the deck, if you can see. Here's and it's gold, gold. it's gold, it's really pretty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was my dream for this second edition. And then I kind of just like do this for a while and I kind of connect to whatever it is that I'm trying to. When I'm doing something for the whole world, I've actually never described this to anybody. So when I'm doing something for kind of like everybody, I like picture myself seeing the whole world. <laughs> I love that. Like I sort of see myself like zooming around the whole world. Oh, 
And then I kind of just go until I feel like the cards stick or my hands kind of not want to move anymore. So we've got, ooh. So we've got light. Oh. And mystery. Ooh. <laughs> very like, yeah, very full in. So I guess when I was, when I was making the light card, it was definitely, I mean, it's light, but I was very much thinking about shadows too, because of course it always goes together. And a lot of times light can be a very painful process because it can touch on things that have been in the dark for a long time. And I feel like that's definitely a theme that I'm feeling today. Um, and I also kind of like that it's with mystery, which is very much about this kind of little portal. Um, and yeah, for mystery, I mean, that one's pretty self-explanatory, but I think I, I think I was really thinking about a lot of times people can think of mysteries as like a negative thing maybe in their life um, or something that's like, there to make you anxious. But for me, I think when I see this card and when I think about this, I always try to see it as like a positive thing that can kind of like move me forward, um, almost like a reason to like get up every day. Um, and yeah, so very interesting, like, I don't know, like light and darkness theme here today for sure. Totally. Uh, there's, I think about the light too, like I, I feel again, just with the, the Aries energy and it's a full moon and it makes me think of like, you know, lighting things on fire and burning mm -hmm. and releasing, you know, lighting things to get, to get through that little, oh, we got hearts on that one. <laughs> Portal. <laughs> Everybody wants to light things on fire. I know, <laughs> um, you know, kind of walking through that little portal on the mystery card and, and getting, getting to the other side, but you know, yeah, the lighting has been We've, we've been, you know, lit on fire in a way Our we have been lit on fire. So yep. that is, can be painful. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of that going on right now, challenging couple of months for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been, a, it's, it's been a wild, it's been a wild time. I've, I've been telling people, I'm like, the only thing I, I have to hold on to right now this month is like faith and flexibility. <laughs> mm -hmm. all, I, all I got. <laughs> exactly. Just like every day waking up like, okay, what do we have today? <laughs> How can I work with this? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, totally. Because trying to um, resist <laughs> is just not going to help you right now. Just not. No. Yeah. Um, I was wondering too, so Rachel hasn't talked about it yet, but she, she has um, a second business, which is super cool. Could you tell everybody about that? Yeah. So I do human design work. Um, my, I guess the name of that part of what I do is called Pure Generators. Um, and I think what I was really looking for was I would, I was in, obviously it's a tarot and um, a lot of these, I guess, different, different modalities, but there was, I always felt like it was a little bit hard to connect that work that I was doing with like what I actually did with my body moment to moment in the world, making decisions and living as like a human. Um, and I also was looking around and I was like, why is this so different for everybody? Why do things work so differently? It's like everyone's seeing this thing that they believe is like the ultimate truth, but like only some of those truths resonate with me. And what is like the explanation behind this? I'm like a very curious person. I always want to get to the bottom of everything. And then I found human design and I was like, oh, that's why, because there's like all these different things we have built into us of like how we make decisions and how we experience the world and how our energy is felt by other people. And it's like a map of that. So I really feel like my Oracle deck and tarot work go really well with human design. Human design kind of gives you the map to how your 
physical aura actually moves around and interacts with other people and how you're meant to make decisions and just all these really helpful things about like how your energy shows up in the world. Um, And then I like this like tarot work and other things because it kind of goes deep into like soul purpose. So I specialize in in the generator and manifesting generator types in human design. Um, But I'm interested in all of the types and particularly for those people, which is 70% of the population, like it's important for us to know why we're here and you're a generator too right Colleen yeah it's like yeah we need to know like what like what is our work that we're here to do what is our purpose what makes us feel really good to do and I think part of the reason why we have such a crazy world is because these 70 percent of the generators are doing things that they don't love and so there's just all this frustration out there um so yeah I've really liked like bringing these two modalities together. I do readings where I do human design and then I do kind of an intuitive reading at the end, sort of as bringing some messages to kind of send someone onto their next step. And yeah, I just really like doing both, like going deep into like the soul, but then also like the physical body energy. Oh, I love that. So you're using, you're using your minimalist Oracle deck in your human design readings. Mm Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Such a map making experience. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. We are not only both generators, we are both Virgos. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I remember when I first saw you, and again, I, hadn't, I didn't know you at the time, but when I saw your tarot card deck, I was just like, this, this person knows. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever this person is gets it. <laughs> it's very Virgo. It's very like... <laughs> Nice and clean and white. And <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. When I found out you were a Virgo, I was like, oh, right. That makes sense. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> totally. I feel like, I feel like so many like powerful spiritual women I find out are Virgos, but we all have this kind of like, you know, it's a classic sort of purity, which shows up in different ways, but there's just like a little something. <laughs> but I definitely like when I found out you were a Virgo, I was like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Oh, oh, I love that. Um, oh, and I think we should also mention, um, if you guys are interested in Rachel's deck, Rachel, show us your deck, please, again. Oh, yeah. Um, Rachel, if you go to her website, which I have minimalist oracle tags, so you can get to her Insta, um, but she, if you use the, col- the code Style Rituals, you can remember that, um, then she'll offer you 15% off, and I... Again, I highly, highly recommend this deck for somebody that's just, just getting into it and or somebody, other Virgos out there in the, uh, the electronic ethers that also appreciate uh, minimalist design. I think it's also great for them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, Well, lady, thank you so much for your time. I really, I really, really appreciate you being here and sharing, sharing your story and your energy with, with me. And um, I will see you somewhere in the ethers. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) Yeah. My pleasure, Rachel. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Okay. Bye. Bye. So everybody, um, we'll be back on again at one o'clock EST on the dot, Virgo style on the dot, um, with Crystal Banner, and she is the founder of Kaleidodope Tarot. So we'll see you back here shortly.